In this video, I'm going to go over a web browser known as the Falcon Web Browser, formerly known as the Cupzilla Web Browser. Now, the Falcon Web Browser can be installed on the Linux distributions and a Windows system. So if you're using Windows, you can still install the Falcon. If you ever decide to switch to Linux, you can install Falcon. So that way you're still in that comfort zone of the software that you're using. Now I'm using Ubuntu Mate 20.04, the long-term support. I'm using the traditional menu, so I go to Applications, Internet, Falcon, and that's not really important unless you're using the same type distribution. Now notice how fast it was. One reason why it's is it's a, it's a lightweight browser. It doesn't use a lot of resources, you know, like Chrome, some of the Chromium-based web browsers. It takes a long time for them to initially load. Then in your settings, if you don't disable, you know, keep running in the background, then that way it makes it speed up, but it uses a lot of resources. So if you have an older system, it uses up a lot of your memory and slows your system down because it's running in the background. This is very lightweight. It doesn't have to run in the background to still be fast because of its size. Now it is a KDE type of browser and I'll show you that in a moment but it's still fast. It, does, it has some extensions but it doesn't use the Chrome Web Store nor does it you can get extensions from Firefox. Now let me uh, show you some things right quickly. I'm going to show you that even though I have Adblock here, I've installed some ex extra extensions that I'll show you in just a few moments that will take out ads from YouTube. You know, I did notice on websites that people said YouTube ads are bad with Falcon. As you saw, there was a brief ad up there at the top and then it disappeared. Now, if I want to click on an ad, or not an ad, a video, here's a music video, it immediately starts playing. I'm not going to play the video for copyrights. So there's no little ad at the beginning of it. And I'll show you how you can fix that uh, if you decide to use the Falcon browser because that was some of the, the things when I was reading about Falcon that people didn't like was the ads on YouTube. So let me go to my website. Uh, let me go to learnubuntumate.weebly and once it loads, I can go to additional software and click on browsers, or I can scroll down to the Falcon browser. As you can see here, I'm compiling a list, and this has been doing over a period of time, that these are browsers that are working with Ubuntu or Linux operating systems, and Falcon is the one I'm going to focus on today. So as I said earlier, Falcon is a KDE web browser. It uses the Qt web engine, unlike the Chrome and Chromium base, it uses Blink. Uh, rendering engine that works both for Linux and Windows system. It used to be known as Cupzilla, so for your old school users, browser users that use Cupzilla, it is now Falcon. Now you don't have to get a lot of updates like you do for Firefox and Chrome because those security updates are for security glitches and failures within the, the Firefox and Chrome, so it doesn't get them quite as often because if you're using the extensions that I show you in a few moments, you can kind of keep tweaking your extensions and improve the security of this browser. Now there are multiple ways that you can install it on your system. If you're using an Ubuntu or Debian based system, here's the way that I recommend you to install it. Go sudo apt or sudo apt-get install falcon and it pulls the installation from the Ubuntu repositories and it installs it on your system after you press enter, put in your password, and you may be prompted to, ins to install some dependencies on your system and then once it's finished it then will place the icon on your system. If you've got other type of Linux distributions, you can click the PKGS to install the APK package, the dev package, RPM, and other types. So just find your operating system, and as you can see, it's selected mine, which is 20.04. If you've got something newer, which is not a long-term support, you can click and install the dev package, the installation file straight from this website. If you're using a Windows system, click the download link and it will take you to the Falcon website. I've already selected the, the download section. If you're using 32-bit Windows, click this one and download and install. If you're using 64-bit Windows system, click this one and download and install. You can install the flat pack from your system if you're a flat pack user. If you're a snap user or if you've never used snaps, you must set up snap to install on your system. Then go sudo snap install Falcon. And I do have those instructions here on my website. So if you're using snap using this right here I have the illustrations and if you would like to use snaps on Linux which I don't recommend I have the instruction here but I do recommend to install it from the Ubuntu repositories or from the PKGS just because it gives you more options with extensions so the image that you see here is when I first installed it via the snaps as you can see it looks nice but I was using a dark theme and yet it's not applying the dark theme to my browser 
I go through it and if you watch the little slideshow, you can advance through it yourself and instead of waiting or you can pause, use the forward and back uh, to advance through those. But as you can see here, uh, there's a Falcon browser store that you can click on to install some additional extensions and themes. There's not a lot, but you really don't need those. You can remove Falcon if you decide you don't like it. If you install it by using the Ubuntu repositories, you can go sudo apt get remove Falcon. If you install it by the snap, you can go sudo snap remove Falcon, dependent upon the candidate that you chose. If you install it by the instructions above, you can remove it by these instructions. And that's why I wanted to show you how so you can remove it by dependent upon which way you've installed it. Now if you install it by the Ubuntu repositories, when you click the preferences menu and you look at the extension, you've got a lot of extensions to choose from if you install it by the Ubuntu repositories compared to the snaps. So I've never been a big fan of snaps, but snaps do give you other ways of installing software on a Linux system. Depending upon which type of distribution, you can still install snaps if you can't find the installation from using like a binary file or the repositories. Let me click here, go to preferences. There are a lot of things in your main menu, but the preferences is how you tweak and adjust your settings of your system. Now let me go down here and click extension. Look at all the extensions that you have to choose from. Now these are the three that are activated. The others that I have below are not. I can click on those and I hit apply and it will activate them. But let me go down through each of the settings. To start with its general, you can choose it to open to a home page where you left off to a blank page, restore a session. I chose a home page and I put Bing.com. Not that I like the Bing search engine, but I do like the background each day. It has a pretty background when I open the browser. You can choose the speed dial, which will speed, uh, ha you know, it has the speed dials that you can put on there, but I haven't really set up any speed dials, but you can enable that feature. You can go to the appearance. You can choose the Chrome look. And I have the different looks on here. I'm not going to go through them and change them right now because sometimes when you're changing them, unless you close the browser and reopen them, certain buttons may have a, a different look on them. But you have the Chrome look, the Linux look, which I have set right now, the Mac look, and the Windows look. For tabs, you've got a lot of different options that you can go through and tweak your tabs. The same thing with browsing. You can go through and I'm not going to read all of these. I do have a link at the bottom that gives you more of a description of each of these. So if you'd like to tweak your settings, if you'd like to change the default font, you can click the drop down and choose the font that you prefer. Here you can change some of your keyboard shortcut options. Here you can choose to ask every time you click on a download or you can have it download straight to a particular folder of your choice. It has a password manager. Now I, ha I don't use password managers within browsers anymore ever since uh, someone got into my Gmail account and synced my Gmail account and had access to all my passwords within my Gmail or my Chrome browser. So I now use a password manager, not the password managers built in with the browser. Privacy. You can set your cookies manager, your JavaScript, your HTML5 permissions. You can even check, by default, this is not checked. Send do not track header to servers. So that way they're not tracking you as you're online, as you're surfing online. Your notifications. Now you can use OSD notifications, use the native system notifications, which by Linux is the default. And you can preview it. You see the little notification that appears when a notification from the browser will appear. It uses the default notification in your system tray. You can have it to time out earlier or if you can have it stay on there a little longer. You got your extensions and this right here is what makes it powerful even though there's not a lot of extension. By, you have to turn on, I think Adblock is the only one enabled. I recommend, and I've got a mouse button with a middle mouse button so I can enable my middle button to scroll up and down on web pages. So I enabled that one just because I have a mouse with a third button in the center. But Grease Monkey, this allows you, by enabling this here, it allows you to install additional scripts. Now I already went to YouTube. This one right here says no more YouTube apps updated. Uh, when I click here it says open scripts directly. This will take you to the folder and I have an image of that on my website so if you can't remember how to do that. That's the no more ads. This is the YouTube cleaner. What this one does is the ad at the top that you saw temporarily and then it disappeared. Sometimes you might have ads on the side. This one will remove those ads. It claims that it removes the ads at the beginning of a video when it starts, but I did notice some of them was starting to play and then some of them slipped through. But when I put the YouTube ad cleaner, including the known skippable ads, this one removed them. So the two uh, YouTube 
I have on here is the no more ads and the YouTube ad cleaner which includes the no skippable ads and it removed the ads from YouTube now immediately when you go to YouTube it might load but then it will immediately disappear so this is the directory when you click this here it will open up this folder in a moment I'll show you how you can manually install additional scripts now you can turn on spell checkers and you have other options but let's take a look at how to add additional grease monkey let me hit OK here to close this out and I'm going to show you the ones I have links to now from these links here you can go to greasy fork that that's just one website where you can get uh, scripts to download the work with and I've chose YouTube but you can scroll down and you can see this is the one I used because it is highlighted and another one I scroll down you keep scrolling down you'll find it on this web page but you can actually set it to download mp3s mp4s with no ads as well so you can download uh, things from YouTube but I'm not gonna go through and read all of these here but let's say for example you need to add this one when you click on this if you're using grease monkey with or tamper monkey with Chrome or Firefox when you and say install the script it will open up at the top then you hit install and it will install it for you but with Falcon it doesn't quite work that way so if I want to install the script I click here and it shows me kind of like a text editor of the actual script itself so to install this what you need to do and it's not hard you need to do it manually just take and hover over where it says install the script or if you want it to you could email yourself that link right click the link say download but you don't have to you can go right click here save link as when it comes up you can put this script wherever you want to since this is the downloads folder I'll hit save and when it's finished I can go to my downloads folder and I'm gonna see this script which is called and you can see it down here no more YouTube ads in the status bar so if I go to my downloads folder it's called no more ads YouTube folder so if I wanted to I could just simply copy or cut and once I got that open and it, it that you can open that within your browser if not go to your home show view hidden files to show the config choose Falcon profiles default inch uh, extensions open grease monkey and then paste that right click and paste and since I already have it there which is I think was this one no more it was this one here it put it in that folder you then close the Falcon browser and reopen it and that should be applied if not go back to your preferences go back to extension and make sure this is activated you can double click or click settings and you should see the ones that are active here so if you've got no more YouTube ads and you've got YouTube ad cleaner this will remove the ads on YouTube and you can add additional scripts you can find scripts that make Falcon more secure so the security of Falcon is it's kind of you choose what scripts you want to put in there to your liking in the way that you're using the actual browser itself now I do have links on the website that you can click here that gives you kinda like uh, it gives you everything about the browser shows you a little bit more about uh, the new version of the Falcon 3.1 that I do have a link and I also have the user base wiki which is like a help file or it's almost like the user manual when you click onto it, it has the introduction the installation changing your theming the fonts extensions spell check dictionaries user style and missing features so this is kinda of like your users manual for the program so if you need to know more information you can you check out through user base on the wiki and it gives you more information about the Falcon now one reason I like to I wanted to go over this is because it's not using like a most of the browsers that you're installing are using the blink rendering engine the 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 engine of chrome and chromium based systems so if you're trying to find a browser getting away from the chrome and chromium based browsers then you might want to give falcon a try you know you might even email me and say well this is old well it's not chrome and firefox so it doesn't get the same updates as they do like I said you can make it more secure on the way that you tweak your extensions you can make add security to it by the scripts that you put in here for grease monkey so if you wanted to make this more private and secure you can find your different scripts online and adjust your scripts within grease monkey but like I said ad blocker is a good block ad blocker 
but it does allow certain ads on certain websites that you can filter out by using scripts within GreaseMonkey. So hopefully this video has been helpful to show you additional browser. You might use it, you might not like it, so I do have the instructions for removing it from your system, but this is another alternative for using uh, Linux and Windows browsers on systems for both of those operating systems. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day.